Hello, everybody. My name is Jordan Noonan. I'm here with Cisco Meraki. And today we're going to be talking about how we can monitor large enterprise deployments at scale uh, with Meraki APIs. Uh, we're joined by uh, an expert internally here at Meraki. Uh, she's a, a technical marketing engineer. So she has the details of you know how things are really happening on the back end, but also is going to be able to present it to us in a way that's uh, consumable by uh, pretty much anyone. So we've got Shweta with us. Uh, I'm going to be <clears throat> taking the role of kind of MC moderator during this session. So if you have any questions, please do use the Q&A function uh, on Bright Talk, uh, and we will either answer those at the end, or if it's a, a really good question or a searing issue, I will uh, interrupt Shweta and we'll talk about it here in the moment. But without further ado, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Shweta, and we're going to start a conversation around APIs. Thanks so much for joining us. Shweta, take it away. Thank you, Jordan. Hello, everyone. And thank you again for joining this webinar at Monitoring, monitoring at Scale with Meraki APIs. And uh, I'm Shweta Palande. I'm the technical marketing engineer with Meraki. And before we get started, uh, yes, Jordan, you can go to the next slide. Uh, I'm glad to be presenting today. And I want to wish everyone a happy International Women's Day. Also, uh, for those who celebrate the Festival of Colors, a very happy holy to everyone as well. All right. So getting started with today's agenda is we will be, um, so if you are joining this session, chances are that you are already consuming Meraki APIs or you are new to Meraki APIs and you're trying to see what else you can do with the APIs, what else can you integrate with APIs and how can you take your network monitoring a level up. So in this session, um, I would like to talk about certain integrations you can do with APIs for Kibana, Google Sheets, uh, some of our business communication apps. We will talk about ServiceNow. And finally, I would like to end with some really good API best practices, how you can make your API um, more efficient. And then we will end up with a lot of resources. All right. So with the next slide, um, let's, let's see why I chose this topic, network monitoring. First of all, network monitoring is extremely critical for your business. Every network admin knows how important network monitoring is. The purpose of network monitoring is to ensure that we have available, reliable, and secure network infrastructure. And we can also proactively detect and resolve any issues that may impact the network's performance and uh, or functionality. Uh, network monitoring has been around for a long time, dating back to the early days of computer networking back in 1980s. But over the period of time, it has become more sophisticated. With uh, We have developed more advanced software tools and techniques for analyzing network traffic. So when it comes to um, integrating networks with a lot of different other tools and what you can do with APIs. I want to start with the first integration which we have is around Meraki APIs and Kibana. Now, uh, let me take a time, less some time to say what is Kibana. So Kibana essentially is a free and open front end application that sits on top of the Elastic Stack, or it's also referred to as the ELK Stack or ELK Stack, like Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And it provides search and data visualization capabilities for the data, which is indexed in Elasticsearch. You can create um, bar charts, pie charts, histograms, etc. And once you have created that, you can create a consolidated dashboard, which will combine all these visual elements and then you can share these dashboards via a browser link. So thus, it enables you to share real-time dashboards, real-time analytical views of the large data sets that you have in Elasticsearch. So if you have a Meraki network and you want to build a monitoring dashboard, which will give you a bird's eye view of not only your network health, but also insights about it, uh, maybe it's the data from a different vendor or any other non-Meraki component, you can leverage Kibana to build such a single consolidated dashboard. So Elastic has a built-in integration for Cisco Meraki, which enables you to ingest syslogs and webhook events directly from your Meraki organization. So in order to um, have that, you first need an Elastic account. Uh, that you can easily create by going to the Elastic homepage. And also, they give you a free trial of, I think, 14 or 15 days. So we 
go to the next slide, I can quickly show you a walkover. Like once you have your Elastic account created, you can uh, go and create your own deployment. And once you are in that deployment, it will uh, load up some settings. And then you can see there is a button called Add Integrations. Just go into Add Integrations, and see, you'll see there's a bunch of different integrations there. All I do is search on Cisco, and we have so many other Cisco integrations. What we are interested in is Cisco Meraki. And once you click on Cisco Meraki, simply have to click on the Add Integration button on the top right corner. And once you add that, you'll see there is uh, there are some detailed configuration steps on how you can um, add the integration and then configure your webhooks to make sure that the destination is your Elastic uh, endpoint, and then you can start consuming alerts via that. So I would highly um, encourage to try out this integration and get a wealth of data so that you can display it in Kibana and also add more data sources from your other maybe non-Meraki components to create a consolidated view in the Kibana dashboard. All right. So we talked about Kibana, um, which is one of the open source tools. The other, the other open source tools uh, which I wanted to touch base on was Google Sheets. It's one of our one of the tools which we use daily and most commonly uh, at some point in the time or other we have used uh, spreadsheets. It can be Google Sheets or any other application. But uh, when it comes to selecting a cloud-based collaborative application for spreadsheets, Google Sheets is one of my favorites. If you are a network infrastructure, if your network infrastructure comprises of different tools and platforms to manage your network, Google Sheets can really come in handy to pull data from multiple sources into a single spreadsheet, which you can use for quick analysis and reporting. Now, within Miraki dashboard, you do have the ability to export summary reports for your organizations, uh, your devices, your usage stats in a spreadsheet format, or you can also email it to someone. But what you can do to level up your monitoring and reporting game is to take advantage of all the API endpoints in Meraki to pull data into Google Spreadsheets and then perform your custom analysis. The best part um, of this type of integration is that Meraki APIs and Google Sheets already exist for you to install and start using. So, hey, Shweta, Shweta, can you mind if I uh, and I'm yes. sorry to interrupt. Um, why don't we just put all of this data on dashboard? Why not just post everything there and, and, and put it on dashboard? What's the, what's the thought process behind having some of it on dashboard and then having this other set of data that we can leverage if we so choose? So um, what I'm understanding from your question is you're asking if we have data which is spread in different places. So, so I'm hearing that you know we have summary reports. We can get some you know pre-made reporting. We can email stuff. I mean, I've I've used that for years at Meraki. Um, but then I'm also hearing that we have this other set of data, these endpoints that if we want to report on them, we can we can use this tool. So I'm just mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious. Is is it just the case that we don't want to have too much data on dashboard because uh, it's like a signal to noise ratio issue or um, if you could provide some insight to that, it'd be, it'd be interesting. Yeah, sure. No, I'm glad you asked this question. Uh, Meraki dashboard, we, I want to say that we always go by the term simplify. And so we always want to make sure that our views and our data are simplified for the end customer to consume. APIs, on the other hand, will take you and a one level advance. And so if you are someone who wants to customize your data sets or you, you want to get an extra set of information from your data, then that is where I can picture APIs uh, to come and play. So having all data crowded in a single place might make, might, uh, make you lose the value. Uh, some of the most critical information might get lost when you have too much or a lot going on into a single place. So this is where I see value, where you have a very consolidated and simplified view of the critical things that you need as a network administrator to view for your network. Whereas if you know that you want to go a level deeper and you want to get more information, you know that these API endpoints ex exist, which can get you that data back and then you can do all your custom analysis with that. Love that answer, Shweta, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So 
Google Sheets, again, coming back to that, when we pull all these API data or you know any of the endpoints and all those data sets into the Sheets, what you can do is create custom charts or reports. And this add-on is actually uh, free to install. And it's present on the Google Marketplace. You just have to go there and click the add-on to your Google Sheets, maybe give some permissions to the Google Suite to start integrating. And once you get that, you have to uh, make sure that you put in your API key for your Meraki organization in that particular app. And then all you can do is on a click of a button, you can pull data from the Meraki organizations and networks and create reports. You can instantly generate reports from the network into a spreadsheet. And you can also take advantage of the existing feature Google Sheets has, like the Explore button, which will give you like a bunch of suggestions on how you can sort the data or how you can visualize the data. Um, there's another really cool feature which I want to highlight uh, within this uh, spreadsheet is, um, Jordan, if you can go a slide ahead, we have something called custom cell function. Custom cell function was uh, recently added in this uh, application. It's a, it's a really awesome feature. What you can do is you can easily fetch Meraki data from a cell function and have the results inserted into the sheets. So all you have to do is pass your required parameters like API key, uh, the organization ID or the network ID, and then it will fetch that endpoint directly into the spreadsheet and format it into the adjacent cells. So um, next slide, just want to cover quickly some additional features we have and what you can do with it. You can create your own charts and graphs once the data is inserted into the spreadsheet. And there is also a button which will insert a dynamic report utilizing the new custom function. This allows you to configure all of your query parameters required for that API call. And with this capability, you can build custom dashboards using the Google's Explore tool, which will quickly build charts, graphs, pivot tables, and always make sure that your data is up to date. We also have something called custom report for uh, open API specification. So uh, you at times, you may want to explore some common properties of the API, like the path, the operation ID, or the parameters. So the natural JSON is pretty difficult to parse. And so this custom report will extract the most important information from your JSON blob, and it will flatten the data into a sheet format for you. So uh, do leverage this uh, Google Sheets tool. It's absolutely free to use, and you can get that up and running within minutes. It's available on the Google Marketplace. Don't wait and get that add-on right now. All right. So moving ahead to our next integration, I can see that if you see, you will be able to easily recognize the three logos which we have there. One is for WebEx Teams, Microsoft Teams, and Slack. I'm sure that you must have used this or you're currently using this in your business in some form or the other. So these kinds of business communication apps to collaborate and communicate with our teams have become essentially important in the past few years, um, especially I would say when the remote work or hybrid work has been adopted so fast. Uh, these applications, they help to ensure that we are connected with our teammates. And these applications, we I know that we have it installed in our laptops and our PCs and most often in our phones. So we get notified instantly whenever our team shares any messages, and which is why these, these apps I feel have become an excellent candidate for network monitoring. If you connect these apps to receive alerts and notifications whenever something critical happens in your network, you will be able to take actions faster and thus ensure that you have high visibility of your network. And so this is where Meraki, network, uh, Meraki web hooks come into play. So I'll, I'll share with you shortly that how you can easily configure and send alerts to each of these uh, communication channels for instant visibility. So uh, Jordan, if you can go back to the slide, yep. So going with our low code or no code theme here, we have webhook templates, which is another great way to receive alerts from the Meraki cloud. So traditionally, when you receive a webhook message, you would receive a raw JSON body. 
So this JSON body would then be required to map to the specific fields that are required in your third party application. With the introduction of payload templates, this data is automatically mapped for you. So you have one thing less to think about. You don't need any servers or you don't need anything to deploy. Meraki will shape the data for you. It will shape the data as required by your target service. And then you can start receiving these alerts instantly in your channels. Some of our most popular built-in templates are for WebEx, for Microsoft Teams, and Slacks. And we also have a ton of templates for other applications such as Datadog, PagerDuty, Jira, ServiceNow, et cetera. And it's not limited to this. You are also able to create your own custom templates. We have a wide community of developers who have created their own custom templates and shared it in our shared code repository, which you can go and check it out. All right. So we talked about a lot of applications. Now I want to touch base on another applications, which I'm sure you must have heard the name of, which is ServiceNow. You might have heard ServiceNow in the context of a ticketing tool. But however, it's also important to note that ServiceNow is much more than just a ticketing tool. It offers a wide range of other features and modules for managing different types of workflows and processes, which is way beyond the service IT management. And yes, ServiceNow is used often as a ticketing platform for IT service management. It allows organizations to manage their IT services and support requests by creating and tracking tickets through, throughout the life cycle. So whenever a user needs assistance with an IT issue or request, they can submit a ticket through ServiceNow platform, which will be then assigned to an appropriate um, IT support team, and then it will be get uh, it will be in the pipeline for a solution. So ServiceNow provides a centralized location for tracking and managing tickets, as well as the tools for reporting and analyzing ticket data to identify trends and areas of improvement. So now, what if I told you that you can connect your Meraki organizations to this platform and have automatic ticket generation for alerts that are generated in your Meraki organization? Yes. We can definitely do that, and that is through our in-house Meraki service graph connector application. This graph connector application, uh, which is what you're seeing on the screen, is available to install for free from our ServiceNow app store. This application supports alert management and synchronization of Meraki organizations, networks, and devices into the ServiceNow graph and the ServiceNow CMDB. So if you are a ServiceNow customer, you can use this application to generate organizations, networks, and devices, and the devices, device statuses in the ServiceNow for increased visibility. So let's see how it works in the back end. The app requires, uh, the app first of all communicates with your Meraki API key, the Meraki API key which is associated with your organization, this is what connects our application with your Meraki networks. And then once the API key is connected, it will import the configuration details from your organization's networks device and statuses, which will be then transformed into records in the CMDB tables in the ServiceNow platform. This application also captures device alerts from the Meraki dashboard, and it creates incidents in ServiceNow from the received alerts. So this created incident will then be automatically linked to the Meraki device, which is connected with that incident. So you can have your custom mappings and you can have your IT team assigned to a certain type of alerts, which you want the IT team to resolve. Shweta, uh, so it, without without this kind of an integration, what does that process look like for the for the customer? Is it a very manual? Like, if we didn't have this kind of integration, then a human being would have to go and manually create a ticket and assign it themselves. Is that is that is that kind of the benefit of this is this method of deployment? Yeah, yeah, you're spot on. Like, I would imagine without this integration, I would imagine uh, to create a ticket manually. Like, whenever an alert is 
alert comes up in our Meraki dashboard, I would imagine going to ServiceNow platform and then manually creating a ticket and then putting in all the details right from the device information, from the device location, the time the alert took place, um, having all this in the ticket manually and then creating the ticket and then assigning to it, uh, assigning this to a respective IT admin. But with this integration, I would say that that time would essentially get cut off and you can save that one extra step of that manual intervention and have everything you know automatically imported and can just be stress-free about all the alerts that are uh, supposed to come from your dashboard and supposed to get ticketed for faster resolution. Yeah, so, so SSID has some sort of degraded performance, an alert is generated in dashboard that automatically creates a ticket in service now and is assigned to some sort of admin yeah. and, and then we're off and running. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, whatever alerts that are supported by our webhooks, all these alerts are directly mapped into service now. So we like the webhooks template part, which we just covered before service now. Uh, if you go on our developer documentation, you will see that it has a bunch of it has a list of all the alerts that are being exported via webhooks. These are the same alerts which will be imported in the service now. So if you want to see what specific alerts will I see after this integration, it's all in our developer documentation. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, and the setup as, is actually pretty simple. Um, if you go on the next slide, slide Jordan, uh, we have like, I just have a screenshot from the actual app. Like within the app itself, we have a guided setup step by step, which will help you configure the connections, the system properties, the incident creation, and the device alerts. So all you have to do is just click on that get started button, and then it will show you uh, like each of the subtasks you need to do in order to complete each step of your configuration. And uh, we recently had some new feature updates to the uh, application as well. So this application will help you to get a concise view of your CMDB execution status. So for example, this is a graph integration graph right here, which will give you a high level view of how many import schedules you had in the day, how many errors were found in the import schedules. You will also get like details of your daily import activities and errors, and it hosts a number of charts and numbers to indicate that the scheduled job status, how the scheduled job status went for your devices. So uh, in conclusion, I want to say that the ServiceNow Graph Connector is a very powerful and efficient tool for managing your Meraki network devices. It provides a centralized platform for managing and alerting a range of network tasks, which will help you ensure that your network is always running smoothly and efficiently. So whether you are managing a large network or just a few devices, I would highly recommend this application for any IT administrator. All right, so we talked about a lot of applications over here. The last part, but the most important part I wanted to talk about was API best practices. We often see our customers, they hit rate limiting um, issues and they, these are some of the very common mistakes or things which just uh, they don't realize that they are making. And so I want, wanted to share like the top four best practices which you can do in order to make sure that you're, you're not hitting the API rate limits and you're efficiently consuming the APIs and making the best use of all the APIs which we have for you. So the first one in that we have is to pick the best endpoint. So we, uh, we often recommend that you use org-wide org endpoints as compared to device-level endpoints. Um, an example would be if you are looking at creating a monitoring dashboard and you want a status of all the devices uh, in the organization, if you are writing a script to get a status of all the devices in the organi organization, you don't have to pull every device individually in the network to get, get the status. Instead, you can just use a single API call to get an org wide status, and that would greatly suffice your requirement. So this is number one step where you can um, 
cut down on the number of API endpoints you are consuming. The other one I have is to poll wisely. If you know that a certain endpoint will only refresh its data after a certain period, there is no point in calling that API endpoint again and again after every second. So for example, let's take for example, an endpoint which gives you a list of all networks. So you know that a list of all networks, this is an endpoint which will, uh, even if you call it every second, the data is not going to change. It's most of the time, the list of networks will remain static or will remain constant for a long period of time unless you manually or programmatic, uh, programmatically go and add a new network. So in this case, the best option would be to cache the data. Like once you call the list of networks, just cache the list of networks somewhere and then use that cache data to again and again uh, call other endpoints. The third one which I have is to check for silent consumers. Now, we have seen a lot of our customers, um, they are not aware of scripts or applications which are old or stale, but they are still lying in their code base somewhere. Those scripts do call our APIs and the customer has no knowledge that this uh, these APIs are being called from certain scripts or applications which are hidden somewhere. So I would like to, I would like you to quickly take make use of our API endpoint, which will give you the API request for the organization. It's an endpoint, I think, which ends with API request. Uh, if you execute that endpoint, you will see the different applications which are currently consuming your APIs. And you will be able to point out that this, this application is currently in use or it's outdated, and you can just go and kill that application. So. Always a good practice to check for old scripts or applications which are unknowingly consuming your API budget. And then the last but not the least is leverage webhooks. Webhooks are a really powerful way, uh, especially if you want to do network monitoring. It's more of like, you don't call us, we will call you. And so you don't have to keep polling for um, network events or network alerts all the time. You can just subscribe to webhooks and whenever a critical event or an alert happens, it will push the data to your network or to your um, alerting service. And uh, again, if you want to know more about leveraging webhooks, I would highly recommend to register for Corey's session uh, the end of the March, who, he will be deep diving into how you can leverage webhooks and to customize your uh, alerting system. So with that, um, I would like to go ahead and again, encourage you all to register for our Meraki Magic API webinars. Uh, we are running a lot of webinars for this whole month of March. And uh, even if you are not able to attend at that specific point, don't worry, we still have the recordings up and running for you. It will be posted on our Bright Talk webinar. So you can scan this QR code, it will get you to the main webinar links and you can see what are the other webinars lined up for this whole month. And then uh, continue learning, uh, continue exploring more resources. Check out our Meraki developer homepage. It's like a one-stop shop for all the developer resources. We have um, uh, learning labs, learning labs such as um, tutorials to help you get started with REST APIs. We have a Meraki sandboxes for you to play around. Uh, we have automation code repositories where we have um, like developers from our communities have contributed their code repositories or automation uh, scripts to these uh, public repositories for you to uh, check it out. Um, I would also highly recommend you to join our Meraki community. Uh, Meraki community is again our huge bunch of community members who constantly ask questions and share their learnings uh, in this forum. And also, if you're interested in learning more about Webhook custom templates, uh, check out this link. It will have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get started in writing custom scripts. And uh, finally, um, again, head out to our main meraki.cisco.com webpage to experience instant demos or require if you want to request a free trial or if you want to talk to a specialist. 
So with that, um, like to open up the ground for any questions and yeah, Jordan. Yeah. So, so we have some specifics, um, before we get into the specific questions, uh, let me just do a couple of little housekeeping it items. We will be sending this slide deck out via PDF after the session. So I know there's a lot of hyperlinks and things you can explore. Um, you'll have that opportunity after the session. So, uh, fear not, uh, we have some specific questions around, um, a couple API endpoints. So first of all, I think this is capable, but I just wanted to check with you. Can we fetch WAN uplink data with time bound parameters using APIs? I know that I was taking a look at the Postman library and I noticed that we have um, like uplink status as one of our endpoints, so. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, I'm pretty sure we do have an uh, endpoint which will give you the uplink status of the devices. And it does have very parameters such as timestamp or T0, T1, which will help you look out for the status in that specific time period. Awesome, awesome. Um, also, there was a question around whether or not we could pull device information using network configuration protocol. Um, I don't know if that's something that we support today. Um, I'm not aware of that. Uh, when it when you say network configuration protocol, uh, is there any specific? Apparently, it's it, it's got its own acronym and everything. Any any T C O N F. So I'm I'm not sure what that is, but um, sounds like maybe it's not something that we're we're working with today. Okay. Would that be. All right, and then finally, it looks like, um, do we have any kind of integration or connection between the Meraki platform and Cisco Network Services Orchestrator? Um, net, with Cisco NSO, um, not that I'm aware of, but we can take a look and if I find something, uh, I'd be happy to share that link in maybe our upcoming webinars or maybe just have a community post. Fabulous. Yeah, no, uh, we'll, we'll definitely keep some of these questions in mind moving forward. Uh, I'll also mention to the group here, we have a an absolutely fantastic uh, uh, series of resources for you just by going to developer.cisco.com um, and, and looking for Meraki. There's there's tons of, you know, API libraries and interactive documentation and videos and enablement materials there. So um, this is really one of Meraki's superpowers, that being the programmability and extensibility of the platform. Um, so we really are, are encouraging our customers to lean into uh, these capabilities and to, to level up, as Shweta said earlier, some of the monitoring capabilities. So um, if there's no other questions, I want to thank everybody for spending your time with us today. Uh, this is a second in a series of five bright talk uh webinars that we're doing so we're looking forward to seeing you here on the next one thanks so much for being here talk to you next time Bye. thank you